Ever since Bakugo Katsuki left UA, he found himself on a grind. On a grind to be the best. His entire life turned from I'm the best and I will be the best to work, work, work. You are the best you know it to be. A workaholic through and through. Thanks to his high school years, he understood the strengths and weaknesses of his most capable former schoolmates, who he now considered to be his rivals. Still, he only just managed to be the second best hero of Japan, just behind Deku. It hurt him, of course. The only thing that really gave him any solace in this was his money. He was stinking rich. Ever since the Germans increased their influence, sponsors had become more and more important for the standing of a hero. Being sponsored by European company meant loads of money and fans. Baku himself had a deal with a French biotech company called Superior Genetics. They catapulted his wealth into the billions. This did mean he had to advertise Superior Genetics products. When Bakugo wasn't on patrol, he was chilling stuff. A miserable life for some, and a life of opportunity for others. But despite all of his wealth, he still felt a little bitter. He had no one but himself, the hero agency he was employed in, and his sponsors. But all that would change when you appeared. You were a beggar. Down on your luck. It all had happened so fast. Your parents had died in a villain attack, caught in a crossfire between them and the police. Which put you in an orphanage. Sadly, you had been too old for anyone to give a rat's ass about you. Trauma, an alien environment, loss of pretty much everyone you knew and loved, those were the things that set your life on a bad course. You shifted for garbage. It had been summer, meaning that the fresh stuff people threw away because it had a few icky parts would rot so much faster. You had dived into the dumpster of a drive-by restaurant. As a child, you loved that chain so much. You begged your parents to go there at least once a week. And now? You went here almost daily to shift through its trash, in the hopes that someone had been unhappy with the order and returned the food. You thanked whatever deity there was for hygiene standards. If they weren't so high, you would go hungry more often than you'd ever be willing to admit. And then, you found it. A delectable treasure. Inside a damp cardboard box was a still-packed cheeseburger. Quickly you unwrapped it, still at the dumpster, and opened the top bun. No insects. You cried a tear of joy. Why would anyone throw away a precious thing like this? Then you took a whiff. It definitely wasn't fresh, but also not completely rotten. The smell of the dumpster ever had completely been soaked into the bun. And then you took a bite out of it. The meat was dry, the bread soggy, and the pickles tasted incredibly sour, but a meal was a meal. You sighed, almost in happiness as you finished it. The food at the homeless shelter was slightly better quality-wise, but nothing was as satisfying as a cheap, disgusting, greasy burger from an exploitative restaurant chain that was the main cause of obesity around the planet. However, suddenly you heard heavy footsteps approach you. Thinking fast, you buried yourself under the rotten food, vowing to never breathe through your nose again. Wherever it was stopped near the dumpster, your heart pounded. Look, it was a male voice. You can't be doing this. 
Your lips quivered. Neighbors called. You're causing a ruckus. They paused and then punched against the metal of the trash dumpster, causing it to vibrate. You suppressed a yelp. Damn kids, they growled. Get the fuck out of there. Kids? You thought. Well, you were 20. Some would still call that being a kid. But whoever was out there didn't seem to be much older than you. You shifted. Get out of there. I bring you home. And if you don't make any fuzz, I won't tattle on your parents. Slowly you poked your head out from the dumpster. There you saw a man. Wait. You had seen him before, zipping by you. He was a hero, wasn't he? They looked at you in surprise. Oh. was all they said. Uh, hello. A bit awkward, isn't it? You stuttered. Bakugo was all one with emotions at the sight of you. A girl dressed in dirty second-hand clothes. A beanie covered in holes on their head. Long, wild hair and grimy skin. Mouth still covered by three-day-old ketchup. He was called for a disturbance, but not for this. Uh, I thought you were some lousy teen tagging shit. You blinked. Lovely, he replied dryly. Who are you? Nobody, he blinked. Look, this is as embarrassing for me as it is for you. Just, just let me go. The hero helped you out of the dumpster, but before you could leave... Don't you almost have that underground city of yours? You blinked. He was talking about Undercity. A hideout where homeless and villains met for shady dealings and a decently dry sleeping place. There was just one issue with it. Undercity is still a city of the homeless, so there isn't much food to go around. In fact, it's easier to get high or catch an STD there than to get a full belly. The hero sighed. Bakugo knew there were homeless walking about, but he never expected to be face to face with one. Primarily because of that hideout, of course. Well, at least let me do something for you. You blinked. Like what? Bakugo sighed once again. Nah. Just. Come. He walked a few meters away and pulled out a phone. With curving legs, you followed him. You stood next to him. What are you waiting for? You asked cautiously. Taxi. Was his only response. Soon a beautiful sports car parked next to the two of you. Wow. It was a two-seater. Wait, how did it get here? Bakugo opened the passenger seat. Inside was no one. How? Then Bakugo tapped on the hood. In big black letters were the words, Let humans do what nature can't. You blinked. I still don't get it. Sponsor slogan. It's not really my car. Anyways, it's self-driving, so pretty sick, huh? Yeah. You sat down in the passenger seat, feeling very out of place. The car's interior smelled like new leather. It looked sleek, like a modern smartphone. And then Bakugo began to drive. Where are we going? You asked, realizing you probably should have wondered that earlier. But before you could say anything, you chuckled. He looked at you confusion. <laughs> I just realized how dumb this is. You could be doing anything to me right now and no one would care. He clicked a button. An automatic voice said, Coordinates confirmed. And he let go of the wheel. Okay. Then let's have a conversation. First of all, I'm driving you home to my place. 
You still felt a little strange about the nature of the vehicle, that you almost didn't listen. Okay. You said, trying to process what was happening. But why me? For what? He shrugged. You have the benefit of being the first. You scowled. Homeless really were the invisible generation, weren't they? Plus, despite that shit on your face, you're kinda cute, so that's a plus. You deadpanned. So, you're what? You clean me, fuck me, then throw me back on the street? He chuckled. <laughs> well, that depends entirely on you, really. Who the fuck are you? His eyes went dark. The one thing Bakugo hated was when people didn't know him. Bakugo Katsuki. I'm the second most popular hero of Japan. Right behind... Uh, he growled. Fucking Deku. You blinked in shock. So a real celebrity? He asked cautiously. He snapped his fingers and pointed at the wheel that made a turn on its own. I'm a guy in a silly hero costume in a self-driving car, and I'm sponsored by companies who will 25 years ago be considered something out of the dystopian horror novel. So yeah, I'm pretty much a big shot. Bakugo looked a bit offended, while well, you just chuckled. <laughs> and I'm a girl who was homeless for the better half of her life, so excuse me that I still haven't processed all of this. He chuckled. <laughs> I really like your attitude. You remind me of my mom. You made a noise of discomfort. Just so you know, I don't run any death games, if you're worried about that, I mean. Slowly you turned your head to face him. I wasn't worried about that until you brought it up. Oops. You shrugged. But this isn't South Korea, so... He laughed out loud and then got serious again. So, you got any addictions? I may have a tapeworm. He blinked. But no, I can't even afford any drugs. What was that about a tapeworm? You chuckled darkly. <laughs> it's called a joke. Sighing, you added. The homeless shelters are equipped with okay medical stuff. I'm mostly kept to myself, so I don't have any STDs. In fact, that's one of the reasons I stay away from Undercity. Outside of my pure hygiene and, uh... And, uh... He looked at you in concern. I have a cut on my left leg. I did a smash and grab a couple of weeks ago. Bakugo shrugged. Well, take a look at that when you're at my place. The driver took you from the outer ghetto of Camino Ward to the more rich area of the Tatooine district. The car stopped inside a parking lot before a massive apartment complex. After leaving the car, he guided you towards an elevator. Once inside the metal box, Bakugo couldn't help but notice your smell. It was something between dirt, cigarette smoke and foul eggs. If anything, this just increased the pity he felt for you instead of making him gag. He took your hand as he pulled you towards his apartment door, taking note of how darkened your fingernails were, before stopping. You gulped as you watched Bakugo slide a keycard into a reader. The door automatically swung open, and Bakugo led you inside his million dollar apartment. The complex he inhabited was owned by a German hero agency that was an affiliate of his own. They were called Anti-Entropy. In other words, another sponsor who would have thought. He sat you down on a chair. Alright, first things first, show me your leg. He really didn't give you any moment to realize what was around you, did he? The wound was too high on your leg, so instead of trying to pull up your pants, you simply dropped them. 
A dirty bandage covered your upper thigh. His eyes darted across it. He clicked his tongue before removing the band-aid. He left to get a first aid kit. It looked nasty, but not untreatable. Internally, he wished you could take a shower with it. But first things first, this was more important. Over the next 30 minutes, he carefully cleaned your leg wound. It burned painfully, and you broke out into tears when he brought forth a scalpel to scrape out dirt. In the end, you were heaving in pain with a fresh band-aid on your leg. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Well, it isn't over yet. You looked at him with puppy eyes. We're going to take a shower now. He took out another plastic wrap and placed it on the band-aid. So keep it dry, remove it when we're done. Without another word, he took you by the hand. You didn't protest. His bathroom was almost the size of the entrance lobby of your homeless shelter. So decadent. So beautiful. The sink was made out of what seemed to be pure gold. He turned on his bathtub and unwrapped his face mask and hero costume accessories, placing them in a corner. Then Bakugo crossed his arms, nodding into the direction of the bath. I ain't letting you crash in my place dirty like that. Your face flushed, but you followed his order. Slowly undressing, maybe trying a bit to make it look sexy? No, that wouldn't work on him. Covering your shame in chest with your arms, you did notice a slight blush on his face. Once the tub was full, he practically pushed you into it. There, sitting in the fetal position, you allowed him to wash you. The water was a bit too hot, but that was okay. Soon, the water turned into a gross black. I'm sorry, you said. Huh? You shouldn't be doing this. We come from two different worlds, after all. He huffed, slightly annoyed. <laughs> Alright, the truth then. You looked at him. Ugh. My manager wants me to do some humanitarian shit in the hopes that that gives me a better image in the news. I can see his point. You felt almost disappointed at that answer. Almost. Well, yes, I feel bad for you. As I said... Never was face to face with a homeless before, but he scrubbed over your back, realizing that this patch of black wasn't dirt, but discoloration, similar to that on your fingers. Look, just accept I feel sorry for you. And, well, I'm glad you aren't one of these please don't pity me girls. Ugh, I hate them so much. And you smile painfully. After a quiet minute, he made a noise. <sighs> what? Since when have you been taking quirk suppressants? You shuddered. Go on. I... You said you aren't taking any drugs. I said I'm not addicted. Not that I weren't taking any. He looked at you. These black patches, your bloodshot eyes, your ragged breaths. Yes, I noticed them. Clear sign of quirk suppressant abuse. Why would you even want to suppress your quirk? Your head sunk. My quirk isn't strong or useful. It just feels good, okay? Bakugo sighed. <sighs> but I'm not addicted, I swear. Mm -hmm. He was judging you, wasn't he? Do you want to clean yourself? You blinked. Uh, I mean, the front. <laughs> oh, now he was getting shy. You took the washcloth off him and began washing your chest, as he took a step back, looking away. What a gentleman, you thought sarcastically. I won't give you any, he said eventually, 
and you sighed. I'm not addicted. He stepped closer again and crossed his arms. Prove it then. You furrowed your brows. How? He went quiet and then left the bathroom. Hey! You shouted after him, but to no avail. With a heavy feeling in your gut, you continued to clean yourself up. As you proceeded to wash your hair, his shampoo smelled like pine resin, very lovely, he returned to the bathroom. But he only spoke once you had finished cleaning up. I was talking to my manager. You looked at him. You're hired as my associate secretary. He raised an eyebrow. That's big shot talk for secret girlfriend. You blinked. You didn't agree to anything like that. But then again, you didn't mind. You get a home, security, some food. All you gotta do is tell the press who you were. And then smile in the camera and tell them how much of a nice guy I am. You blinked. But why? Told you. It's a publicity stunt that benefits you just as much as me, he huffed. <laughs> Besides, now that you're clean, you really aren't that bad on the eyes. You blushed hard. Are... are we gonna bang? He shrugged. Only if you want to. I'm fine either way. Yeah, but... Uh, first... Get tested. Your legs quivered. While him asking you to get tested first was embarrassing, you understood why. Well, uh, you gulped. Um, when you see I don't have any illnesses, could we? Maybe. You couldn't believe you were about to say this. What? Would you mind breeding me like the little worthless slut that I am? He laughed nervously. What you just said really appealed to him. <laughs> I knew it. Man, I already told you I love your attitude. Let's go.